Hello guys, let's talk a little bit more about numbers, precision and accuracy. So there are two types of numbers. We will have exact numbers and those are the type of numbers that you can count exactly. For example, here I have exactly two apples. I can count them, right? Or I can count that I have five fingers in my left hand. So there are also exact numbers that are given by definition. And those are, for example, one dozen. One dozen eggs is just 12 eggs. And it is also going to be an exact number. Inexact numbers are measured numbers, okay? And they depend on how these were determined. There might be a human error, there might be an equipment error, right? So those are not exact numbers. Now, let's take a look at a measurement. So let's say, for example, that I have a tape here, okay? So this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, and these are all centimeters. And I have to measure something, and I see that the length goes up to about this point. So I know that it's one point something centimeter, right? So one point, because I see the number one here, and I see that it's definitely longer than one, but it's shorter than two. So the one is going to be an exact measured number, and the second digit after the one, let's say 1.3, it's, I'm still going to call it reliable because it's around 1.3, maybe 1.4, but this is an inexact number, okay? It's still reliable, but the second digit is inexact. Now, let's talk about accuracy. Accuracy is the measure of how closely the individual measurements agree with the true volume. So let's say that you are weighing out something and you're measuring the weight several times, like five times or 10 times, right? and you are getting a number around 10 grams. So if the real volume is really 10 grams, then your accuracy is very, very good because you are around the true volume. Now, what about precision? The precision refer refers to how closely individual measurements agree with one another. So let's say that your true volume is 10, but you are getting measurements around 12 grams all the time, right? 12.1, 12.2 grams, 12.3 grams. So you will think that your true volume is actually around 12, but maybe there is something wrong with your weights and you are measuring something wrong, right? There might be human error or equipment error. It happens all the time. So the precision refers to how close the individual measurements agree with one another. So if you are still getting something around 12 grams all the time, your precision is really good, but your accuracy will be off if the true volume is, 12, is 10 grams, not 12 grams, okay? So the best case scenario in the lab when you are working is to have an accurate volume with high precision, of course. All right. So let's talk about significant figures. Significant figures are extremely important because we don't want to overstate or understate the precision of a number. So if you measure a quantity, all digits are going to be counted significant. And there are a couple of rules that you have to keep in mind to figure out how many significant figures do you have in a number, okay? So all non-zero digits are going to be significant. So every digit that is not zero is significant. Zeros between non-zero digits are always significant. Zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant. And zeros at the end of a number are significant only if the number contains a decimal point. Okay, so let's try to use these rules and count how many significant figures or sig figs do we have in the following numbers. And after that, we will have to round all these numbers to two significant figures. All right, so let's look at A. We know based on the rules that all non-zero digits are significant. 
So how many non-zero digits do we have in this case? So I can count one, two, three, four, five. Do we have a zero? No, not at all. So in this number, I'm going to have five significant figures. And I also have to round this to two significant figures. So how would I do that? So to round this, I have to have only two sig figs. However, my third significant figure is a nine. So I have to round it up. So my uh, rounded number is going to be actually 9t. Okay, let's take a look at b. How many non-zero digits do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we are actually going to have at least 6 significant figures. Now we have a 0 between non-zero digits. So what does the rule say? The rule says that zeros between non-zero digits are always significant. So I will have to count this extra zero as also significant. So in total, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven significant figures in this number. And to round this number to two significant figures, I'm going to get 12. All right. Let's take a look at C. So how many non-zero digits do we have here? One and two. And then we have two digits that are zeros. So what will happen with the digits that are at the end of a number? So based on our rules, zeros at the end of a number are significant only if the number contains a decimal point. Do you see a decimal point here? No, right? I don't see it either. So we are going to have already two significant figures in this number, 5,400, and we do not have to round it anywhere. Okay, let's take a look at D. So let's count the non-zero digits, one, two, three. Okay, and then we have one zero. Okay, so the zero is at the beginning of the number. What is the rule? The rule says that zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant. So in this case, I'm going to have three significant figures. And to round this number up to two sig figs, I'm going to have to round it to 0 0.35 again, because the third significant figure is larger than five, right? So I'm rounding up. Okay. What about E? So in case of E, I'm going to have one, two, three non-zero digits. And then I have a bunch of other zeros. So will the zero at the beginning of the number significant? No, right. So this zero is not significant. Okay. Will the next zero between the non-zero digits, between the one and the two, be significant? It will, right? So zeros between non-zero digits are always significant. And then what about the zero at the end? So we know the zeros at the end of a number are going to be significant only if the number contains a decimal point. And we do have a decimal point there. So this zero is also going to be significant. So we are going to have one, two, three, four, five, significant figures. And to round this number to two significant figures, I'm going to have 0 0.11. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Let's look a little bit more on significant figures. So what happens when you are adding or subtracting numbers? So answers have to be rounded to the least significant decimal place. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Okay, so I'm going to have, let's say, these three numbers. So 33.8, 4.52, and I'm adding these numbers together, plus 11.0034. So I know that I have to round it to the least significant decimal place. So where is my least significant decimal place? In which number? In the first, second, or the third number? 
4.52 or 11.0034. In the first number, right? So here I'm going to have the least, the smallest number of significant decimal places. So if you do the whole calculation, you are going to get 49.3234 three four which then has to be rounded to 49.3 to the same decimal place as the least significant number which is the first number okay so what happened when i'm doing subtraction so let's say that i have 689.563 minus 688.93 so if you actually do this calculation, you are going to get 0 0.633. Now I have to round this number. So which of these numbers, the first one or the second one, will have the smallest number of significant decimal places? The second one, right? So this one. So this means that I cannot have more than two numbers after my decimal place. So I have to round this to 0 0.63. Okay, now what happens when we are working with multiplication or division? In that case, we have to round to the same number of digits as the measurement with the fewest number of significant figures. Okay, so you have to find the fewest number of significant figures. So let's do a calculation. Let's take 249 multiplied by 112 multiplied by 700.0. So the smallest number of significant figures are actually in my first two numbers, right? So both in 249 and 112, I'm going to have only three significant figures. So if you do this calculation, you are going to get a really large number. So 19, 5, 2, 1, and 600. Okay. Now, I know that I have to round this to three significant figures. So to get the three significant figures, I'm going to keep the first three digits. And also, since we are talking about chemistry, I want to use scientific notation. So if the decimal place is here, I want to move it, right, to have only one digit before my, significant, my um, um, decimal place. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this is going to give me 1.95 times 10 to the seventh. Okay, I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video.